Kentucky. But let's talk first, Congresswoman, about Secretary Geithner. You heard what he said. Yes, I did. New rules for Wall Street mean no more taxpayer-funded bailouts. Is it case closed? No, it is not closed at all. And what the American people want to be certain that we do not do is take boom and bust and replace it with fraud and bailout. And they are tired of the bailouts. They want this to end. But he said the this banks are going to pay for it now. This too big to fail, and they know better than that. Right. They know that this financial regulatory reform bill in its current form that is working its way through is uh, going to institutionalize the bailouts. And this is something that they do not want. Everyone well, well, is for you, reform. What you heard but, him say, the banks would actually pay for this. Just tell me, why don't fund. you believe that? into a fund because you can look at history and see that it always gets passed. It's the Reagan thing. Corporations don't pay taxes. People do. They know that they're going to see fees go up. The way community right. banks they could pass it are on treated through this Consumer Financial Protection right. Agency is horrendous. It would be the demise of community banking. I think the key thing you heard Secretary Geithner say is that if a, a bank gets in trouble, they get dismembered. They get taken over. They get essentially uh, uh, they go away. They go away because they're punished for what they do. And I think that's the biggest incentive of all. You know, what the Republican Party is doing now is like the death squad stuff. They think if they say it often enough, this doesn't end too big to fail. People will believe it. But it's not true. And this is a real test for the party of no. For the first time, distinct federal oversight of the largest institutions whose failure could um, put the entire financial system at risk. And that is something, when you said that uh, the public does not want more Washington control, I think the polling is pretty clear that on this front, the public does want more Washington oversight of these large institutions, which is not available now uh, and would now be uh, uh, through a Council of Federal Regulators and the Fed. The second issue is what you do when one of these behemoths fall over anyway and collapse. And, and that is what we went through in 2008. And if you think of the 2008 as your template for a bailout, where you put a lot of money in, in an institution and it continues to exist, same management, stockholders, and so forth, the, the version of the Senate bill that was negotiated by Democrat Mark Warner and Bob Corker of Tennessee is designed to prevent that. What they both say is that the resolution mechanism in the bill uh, is designed to eliminate the management, uh, wipe out the shock stockholders, force the creditors to take a haircut, uh, and then that bank would be, uh, or financial institution would be, this construct that Republicans have made. Uh, is that what is impeding recovery is primarily big government at this point. Uh, after, uh, which, and, and to a large extent, they have succeeded in that. You look at all the trend lines, Democratic advantage over Republicans on the economy, Obama approval on the economy, those are all declining. I mean, this is rather striking after the largest failure of the market economy in 2008, probably since the Great Depression. Democrats, I think, have been losing control of the macro argument here. Wall Street, though, is a place that really, uh, and, and this financial regulation, is a place where these two contending visions collide. Because I think the, as you heard from the Congresswoman, the Republican argument primarily is that more government intervention is the problem. And Democrats, I think, want to make the case that what led to this disaster was the hands-off approach that the Republican administration took, the Bush administration, the low-tax, low-regulation approach that their agenda uh, was built around led to this. And I think you were going to see these contending both policy and political visions very clearly on display so if this bill comes to the Governor, Senate floor next the, year. the reason the Republican Party is on the right side of this economic debate is simply this. The election is going to be about freedom. And the American people know that being dependent on the federal government for home loans, for your health care, for your education, for your jobs, even for the kind of light bulb that you want to put in the fixture, is not the aspirations of a free people. And because of that, we are on the right side of this argument. What Everything it, um, that we're discussing on, here affects What did freedom get the American people during right. that led to the financial collapse? Is that not a fair question about right. the limits of, of the free capitalist system? We know, we know that if you let free markets work, there is no expiration date on the free market. There is no expiration date on the American economy. What the American people do not like is the overreach of government, and they are seeing. I'm sorry, it Congressman. My time question was, what did again. the free, what did the free market get us? What did freedom get us in the economic collapse? You had an absence of government regulation, and you had the free market running wild. Look and what the result was. And you need, and you need more oversight. Mm -hmm. We all agree with that.